The Game Boy Advance was Nintendo's next chapter in its long series of successful handhelds. It produced several classics, updates for Nintendo, Mario, Metroid, and Castlevania series, and you're going to have your favorites. I know I have mine. I actually purchased one at launch and enjoyed it throughout its lifetime and still play it to this day. And in today's video, I'm not talking about any of those classics. I'm talking about bad video games released on the Game Boy Advance. I have chosen five games from my personal collection to share with you and explain why they made the list. It's hard to take so many bad games and narrow it down to five. You're gonna have your worst picks and I wanna hear from you in the comments below. So sit back, relax, you may wanna grab some popcorn and let's take a look. I remember growing up with the original Defender and it was an all time arcade classic. And you know, for many out there, this is the Defender that they remember. During the 2000s, several iconic classic game IPs were being updated and Midway wanted to cash in on this and gave the responsibility of porting Defender to Outlook Entertainment. So booting up the game, I was pretty excited about checking out this updated Defender. You have different modes, XGP, Classic, which is okay, and XG. We're gonna focus on XGP, which is truly awful. First and foremost, you can't fire as you're turning in a different direction. Uh, terrible hit detection. What's up with the stupid graphics too? It looks like a, a an amateur job and just does not represent what the original classic was. It just takes away all the fun. This is a terrible update to such an arcade classic. You know, this is a good example where you can add additional ships and upgrades and it doesn't work. So I thought, you know, it's one of three modes. I'll try out the XG and Classic and controls really destroy this version. While looking terrible, it went with a different control scheme, making it difficult to change directions, which you do frequently in this game. This is by far one of the worst updates and upgrades to a timeless classic I've seen. Alex Ryder was a successful novel series and it was adapted to a film and this is a game that's based on the film which is truly awful. And so what makes this game so bad is the terrible controls, sluggish controls, and just boring. The game can be summed up by going around collecting various key cards using various gadgets and you're going to be fighting against the same enemy over and over and over again and you're going to it's going to be typical of of a guard with with different colors but this is truly a terrible way to represent a decent novel series now the film is bad so already from the from the get-go this was probably doomed but this can be so much better it seems like just a very much a, a watered down version of a, of a Metal Gear Solid series type of game. And it's just absolutely dreadful. There is another adaptation of the film and there was a DS port under the same name and it is so much better, but that's not saying much. If you're a big fan of the book series, stick with the book. There were so many hits on the original PlayStation. And one that comes to mind is the Medal of Honor series. This is the second game that came out after the first one. And it's pretty solid for a 3D engine. Now the PlayStation, uh, it, with its huge library, wasn't perfect, but it had so many options in every genre to play. And I know there's a lot of fans of this series, especially the early ones, as the PlayStation was able to handle a 3D engine and make a decent game no matter what it was, RPG, racing, or first person shooter. Then there's the Game Boy Advance version. And I thought, oh, I'll check this out. I'm a fan of the series. How bad could this possibly be? So booting it up. Oh boy. I cannot believe what I'm playing. This is truly a dreadful first person shooter on the Game Boy Advance. Playing this on an actual GBA is difficult to see anything. First and foremost, the frame rate 
has to be in the low teens, definitely below 30 frames a second. And it's just awful. I, and I, you know, it just it's frustrating because there was classics such as Doom and Doom 2 and even even a Duke Nukem built from the ground up for the Game Boy Advance. So a, a first person shooter can be done right on this handheld. And for whatever reason, they cut corners or weren't able to produce a 3D engine that was viable for this game. And it, it is just truly, truly dreadful to play. Everything from the frame rate, it's difficult to see things. And it does try to, try to include everything from its PlayStation 1 counterpart, but this is a definite step down and one of the worst first person shooters on the Game Boy Advance. When people think of happy memories that they've had playing Sega Genesis games, Sonic the Hedgehog typically comes up as it was one of the best and most successful games released on this console. Uh, I, for one, am a huge fan of the Sonic series and have lots of happy memories of playing this. It was so fast, it really demonstrated the capabilities of what the Sega Genesis can do. It was truly a remarkable mascot and a wonderful addition to the already amazing Sega Genesis library. Fast forward 15 years and in 2006, Sega wanted to celebrate the 15th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, the Sega Genesis version, and released a Game Boy Advance version of it. You know, with the Sonic team and Sega, how bad could this possibly be? This port was rushed in one month using the Sonic Advance engine, which wasn't made uh, for Sonic the Hedgehog, the original, and you can tell. It's jumpy, it's jittery, there's frame rate issues, it's slower, the list goes on and on. There's bugs and glitches, sometimes enemies pop out of nowhere, and uh, the big issue is just the gameplay. Now, I don't have a problem with the different sound. Some people do. I don't think the sound is, is the worst. Some people hate it. But really, it comes down to the countless issues of slowdown. And even right here, I mean, just from the quick gameplay I'm showing you right now, you can tell that this is not the Sonic that you remember on the Sega Genesis. This is a slowed down, frame rate, jittery mess of a port and an absolute tragedy for people that are playing Sonic for the first time checking out this port because it doesn't represent how amazing the original Sonic the Hedgehog was on the Sega Genesis. Adding insult to injury, a couple days after this was released, there was an amazing Sega Genesis collection on the PlayStation Portable which had Sonic the Hedgehog on it and it completely destroys this version. Do you remember Rock'em Sock'em Robots the Toy? I do. And in 2006, we got the opportunity to take a happy childhood memory and play a video game version of something that many people cherish. I was excited to check this out as I think it would make a great fighting game. I mean, take a classic toy line and adapt it to a video game. Should be no problem, right? Oh my goodness. First and foremost, the graphics are terrible, but more importantly, this just does not represent the toy that many grew up with. Uh, while you can do moves in this and uppercuts and there is a jump feature, uh, the left and right when you have to knock someone out is completely cumbersome and it requires you to alternate left and right shoulder buttons way too fast. In a typical fight, you're just button mashing the same button over and over and over again with no skill involved to destroy your opponent. This is a terrible fighting game and an utter disappointment as I think it would make a great video game. Unfortunately, this was not the case with this Game Boy Advance game and one of the worst fighting games on the Game Boy Advance. So those are my five picks for bad Game Boy Advance games. What are yours? Comment below as I would love to hear from you. And if you're new to my channel, you may want to check out some of my other videos. I've done a whole series of bad video games and a link will be below to that. 
And if you like what you see, you may want to consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. I'm having a lot of fun doing this series on my channel and I have many more videos planned. Stay tuned. This is the Immortal John Hancock and you have a great day.